This episode brought to you by the Dollar Shave Club. A great shave at a great price, conveniently delivered right to your home. I am the Nicholas Cage. Hot damn, you've just been upstage. I laugh and I rage and I break every gauge. Nick Cage, I'm on a rampage. Nick Cage, rage cage. Scream hallelujah, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Nick Cage, it's my golden age. Ridiculous Nicholas Cage, you're sage. A sorcerer of age. Engage, my name is... Wait for it. Nicholas Cage. the nostalgia critic guy remember it so you don't have to why do i keep falling for nicholas cage movies there used to be a time where when he was good he was amazing and when he was bad he was still amazing he was one of the most entertaining people to watch but then he got into making so many of them that the cage magic was spread too thin like but i scraped over too much bread it wasn't as much fun anymore nevertheless i still looked forward to them why? Because I'm a friggin' dumbass. No joke, if anyone ever involves a celebrity in something I like, I always fall for it. Hello? Hello, it's Nicolas Cage. THE Nicolas Cage? I will no way question this! Naturally, I want you to join me and Tony Goldmark in the other room. We'll dress like bears and sing DuckTales in Egypt. You got it! Oh, and by the way, this call is collect, because I just COLLECTED YOUR DUMBASS! <laughs> Damn it, Tony, no wonder they call you some jerk with a camera. And I got it all on camera. <laughs> well, great, you exploited my very specific foible. And it was amazing. Ha! <laughs> so you flew all the way out here just for that, huh? Yeah, in hindsight, it didn't really justify the cost. I mean, plane tickets, gas, hotel. Do you have a hotel? I slept on the roof. Good God, man. Mind if I stay here until I crowdfund my way home? Yeah, sure. God bless you. Ooh, the Sorcerer's Apprentice. You know, Critic, in the course of reviewing Disney rides, I also sometimes review their movies and other projects. Good. Thus, in 2010, Nicolas Cage gave us another doll disaster with the Sorcerer's Apprentice. All right, get over here. Whee! Sorcerer's Apprentice. In 1940, Walt Disney released perhaps his most audacious experiment in a career of audacious experiments. Fantasia, heralded by some as Walt's masterpiece, combined classical music with classic Disney animation in ways no one had seen before. And its most famous sequence is the Sorcerer's Apprentice starring Mickey Mouse. A simple story about Jander who almost destroys the world, it featured the mouse who started it all in his red robe and blue hat magically controlling the cosmos, becoming one of the most iconic images in Disney's illustrious history. Then seven decades later, this presumably happened. Disney, I want to play a wizard. Well, we can certainly do that. Yes, we have a live action version of Sword in the Stone. No. Black Cauldron. No. Wizards of Waverly Place. No. A Wicked Style Jafar movie. No. An all-male Hocus Pocus reboot. I want to play Mickey Mouse. What? Mouse. No. Yes. Okay. Just run it by my agent. He says yes to everything. We noticed. Thanks, guys. This is gonna be awesome! <laughs> oh, man. I cannot wait to see where this one leads. 
Thus, we got a movie that has little to nothing to do with The Sorcerer's Apprentice called The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Directed by John Turtletob. You mean the same guy who directed? Oh, yes. Three ninjas. Thor! The film was trying to cash in on hugely successful cinematic updates of Disney properties at the time, like Pirates of the Caribbean and Pirates of the Caribbean. But where that movie at least had some connection to the original source material, this... It had a dancing broom for a minute. Authentic! Let's take a look at why the magic is gone with Sorcerer's Apprentice. It opens with a prologue so complicated you'd swear they were trying to squeeze in five other movies into this movie. The fate of mankind rested with the just and powerful Merlin. He taught his secrets to three trusted apprentices, Balthazar, Veronica, and Horvath. This is Ian McShane, by the way. I figured I'd introduce myself because I have no idea what character I'm supposed to be in this. Nevertheless, I'll still leave a bigger impact than Pirates 4. Morgana Le Fay, Merlin's most deadly enemy. Well, that in Transformers 5. We are but servants. Yeah, I'm gonna assume that's a different spelling. But the way this movie goes, it wouldn't surprise me. Merlin, over. You betray me? Yeah. Nice read there, Spirit Halloween Store Beard. This is why the Borg Queen is assimilating you. This movie's in such a hurry, they dissolve from one shot to the exact same shot. Man, I hate it when movies do this. This was clearly a full scene at one point, but it didn't work, so they cut it down in editing and tried to make it faster, and that's why we should all go to Mitt Romney's house dressed as hamsters and convince him he's a hamster too and his entire human life has been a dream. Wow, you really went off on a tangent there. Yeah, I'll fix it in post. Veronica sacrificed herself for Balthazar by drawing Morgana's soul into her own body. Balthazar trapped them both in the Grimhold, an inescapable prison. That you can buy at your grandma's antique store. So Balthazar, played by Cage, searches the world for Merlin's successor, the prime Merlinian that will one day defeat the trapped Morgana. But he'll in no way use his powers to stop the atrocities of history. For mankind will never be safe until Morgana is destroyed. Maybe he can use those powers to stop two world wars if you have the time! Slavery, genocide, those will sort themselves out. He's got to keep the world safe. Flash forward to our young protagonist being awoken by his corporate masters heading to school in the year 2000. This is David, a boy who's so new to dating that he asks a girl out the same way a girl would ask a girl out. Yeah, where's the box where I would like to be David's restraining order? But the note blows away and David chases after it. No! No, lady, don't! I guess I could just ask her since she clearly already knows I wrote it, but I need the receipt for my taxes! But he comes across Merlin's magical shop of gremlins reading the never-ending story as he looks at all the mysterious wonders. Like, look, a decapitated little girl's head. Na -na 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 -na. He literally bumps into Cage, who, as you would expect, is a little quirky. I have something I'd like to show you, Dave. How did you know my name was Dave? Because I can read minds. Okay, movie, Nicolas Cage is one of those people you do not need to overscore. Yeah, he's already his own strange music. A magic ring clings to his hand, meaning he's the chosen one. No way. Because God knows why your actions should make you special, he's just chosen! But an evil villain is released as well. No way. Is that all this twerp says? No way. No way. No way. This kid really knows his vocabulary from A to A. It's not very sporting of you, Balthazar. Where's that dog? Oh, apologies, I guess I could just look down. Question two, how to get burned? How to get burned? The evil Horvath, played by Alfred Molina, manages to fight Cage back. I'll have that doll. Da -da 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 -da. I am Nicholas Cage, Sparrow. Molina throws fire at him, only to find out fire doesn't hurt him. So why did he throw fire at him? They both get sucked into the magic urn, and David leaves the store and coincidentally comes across his field trip. Ew, he beat his pants! <laughs> A jar broke! This is just water! <laughs> oh my god, that kid's laugh is terrifying! Is she eating somebody's soul while laughing that hard? Hey, you leave her alone! She's a good friend of mine. Really? Yeah, she grew up into a lovely woman. Look! <laughs> Was she just standing there in silence until you addressed her? 
<laughs> it's best not to question her. <laughs> uh, she's freaking me out. <laughs> I told you it's best not to question her. Let's just continue the review. Cut to ten years later, where David has grown up into man-seeking plot, Jay Baruchel. A shame his voice didn't grow up with him, as it constantly sounds like two geese fighting over rye bread. He lives with the unsuccessful prototype of Ned in Spider-Man Homecoming and comes across an old familiar face. I'm sorry, is Becky? It's Becky Barnes. Bucky Barnes? Hang on, I've always wanted to do this. Longing, rusted, 17, day... Hey. We were in fourth grade together. Yeah. <laughs> in a bizarre twist, this is actually the scary girl that was laughing at him all those years ago. <laughs> oh great, you got her going again. What do we do? Just. Let her laugh herself out. <laughs> Can we put a blanket on her or something? Go ahead. You do it. No. He helps her fix the college radio station she works at, while Cage and Melina have a vase. Cheerio, Balthazar! You will take me to a lawyer to stop a Dresden Files lawsuit. Melina finds David and tries to force him to give him the Russian doll known as the Grimhold. I'll cut the truth out of you. And at that very moment, the word NERP was created. He finally figures out the sorcery of opening a door, and Melina sends wolves after him. Though, honestly, there's about a billion ways he could have just kept him in that room. But it's cool, Cage turns them into puppies! Puppies? If he could turn the wolves into puppies, how come he couldn't turn Melina into a baby? Because then he'd have to raise them with Holly Hunter, and the Coens already have enough repeating. Cage flies in, though, on a pretty badass metal eagle. Oh, hey. Where's the doll, Dave? That's exactly what I want Nicolas Cage riding a badass metal eagle to say. They escape, and Dave tries to take in the situation. I've been stuck in an urn for the last ten years. So have I. A, a figurative urn of ridicule. That line of dialogue guest directed by Judd Apatow. It shows. Hey, here's a fun game. Try to spot the moment where Nicolas Cage actually seems invested in what he's saying. It is a prison for the most dangerous Morganians in history. Horvath wants to free his fellow Morganians and destroy the world. You have a very special gift. Trick question! There are no moments when he's invested in this! It's so weird. He just looks and sounds so bored. The whole movie is stunningly devoid of Nicolas Cage freakouts or any energy to speak of. You know how he likes to alternate between screaming and soft muttering? Here it's just soft muttering for the whole movie. It's Nicolas Cage as a sorcerer! How is this dull? Till we found the sorcerer who would inherit his power. Focuses your energy, helps you master new spells. You have to become the Prime Meridian. You're going to set me free. Hi, I'm Nicholas Cage. I know, advancing in age. I'm slower and duller and lacking the rage. Nick Cage, not really engaged. Nick Cage, got paid my wage. I like eating bread, paying taxes, and taking these pills. Nick Cage, these pills are so great. They send all the goblins away. Nick Cage, this song doesn't rhyme. Nick Cage, I sleep now. Oh. You see, this is what I'm talking about. There's no more Nicolas Cage freakout movies anymore. I always think it's gonna be one, and it never is. Well, you know what? I'm not gonna be that gullible again. Hello? Hello, this is Sergeant Slaughter. Yo, Joe! I was wondering if you wanted to team up with me and Devil Boner in the other room to travel to Africa and wrestle lions until their heads explode. You got it, I'll be right there! <laughs> God damn it, you guys! <laughs> Jerk with the camera! Hey, Devil Boner, you play one on him too? It's so easy! Ah! I know, right? He is so stupid! Hey! So Cage gives Dave a crash course in the science of magic. 
Actually, they do that surprisingly a lot in this movie. Everything we see is in a constant state of vibration, thus the illusion of solidity. Sorcerers can manipulate matter because they're born with the capability to use the entire power of their brain. We will the vibrations to go faster. Is sorcery science or magic? Yes and yes. No and no. When you try to shoehorn science into magic, all you do is make it less fun for the fantasy lovers and even more infuriating for the science nerds. We don't need to know the science of the flux capacitor. We don't need the engineering manual for the ring of power. Do you want midichlorians? Because this is how you get midichlorians. They go to Chinatown to see if they have any of that Mulan Szechuan dipping sauce. Bad news, they don't. Oh. So they decide to look for the doll, which they trace back to an acupuncturist. This leads to a lot of comedic antics. Hi. All right, that's all he could come up with. Let's see how Cage is doing. Do you have an appointment? <laughs> okay, his piss poor Cantonese is all the comedy we need. But Goro's less impressive two-armed brother tries to attack. Oh my god, I have no idea how to train these. Be still. Not the beads! Not the beads! Jesus, Susan Saranda's dragon from Enchanted look more real. This is it. Use the Schwartz. The dragon is defeated just as the cops show up on the scene. Hey, what do you got? We had reports of a Nicolas Cage movie on the loose. Bottle rocket meets paper dragon in this Asian festival. And between you and me, Cap, I think some of these folks were hitting the saggy pretty hard. Glad to know his New York is as good as his Cantonese. Does he think New York is Boston? Cage takes Nerp Face to a safe place to train him as he opens up the book to open up the book. The art and science and history of sorcery, including our recent history as well. Okay, that was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, give him a point. This is the Merlin Circle. Once you enter, there is no going back. So I should probably pee first? I can hold it. You know, the first time I did a Bruckheimer production, I was teamed up with Sean Connery. What life choices brought me here? You know, a lot of people have been asking me recently, are you Walter White? And I say yes. So they ask Walter, and I say Mr. Cranston, they say sorry. How do you get your head so smooth? Well, that's the Dollar Shave Club. I use the DSC Executive Razor, it's one of the smoothest I've ever used. And as someone who had a lot of hair to get rid of, yeah, fair amount, I mean, between Kelsey Grammer and Patrick Stewart, I can tell you it really works. For a limited time, new members get their first month of the Executive Razor with a tube of Dr. Carver Shave Butter, because why would you live in a home without something called Shave Butter? For only $5 with free shipping. That's a $15 value for only 5 bucks. And after that, the razor's only a few bucks a month. This offer is exclusively at dollarshaveclub.com slash awesome. We all gotta shave, and you might as well do it at a great price while also having it delivered to your door. So skip going to the store and have the razors delivered to you monthly. Get your special deal at dollarshaveclub.com slash awesome. I'm Walter White. Nah, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm Brian Cranston. Saying check out the Dollar Shave Club today. From the studio that brought you The Sorcerer's Apprentice comes the next big step in world building. Officer, I heard it down here. I, 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 I don't know what to do. Stay here, you incredible pussy. I'll go check it out. You think you're the only sorcerer in the world. Balazar, you've become part of a much bigger symphony. Who the hell are you? Stakowski, conductor of the orchestra. Leopold! L Leopold! I'm here to tell you about the Fantasia Initiative. The Fantasia Cinematic Universe. Start Phase 1 in 2018 with Night on Bald Mountain with Jared Leto as Chernabog. Fire! Tits! Skeletons! Demons! Skeleton demons with their tits on fire! <laughs> I'm the devil! <laughs> Mr. Leto, you're wanted on set. I'm on set in my mind. <laughs> Whatever stops you from mailing me sex toys. And in 2019, Dance of the Hours with Scarlett Johansson as the Ostrich. I was a dancer, trained at the Red Room. At graduation, they sterilized me. 
I can never lay another egg again. Those hippos will pay. Coming year 2020, Jack Black is Bacchus in the Pastoral Symphony. Mm, gonna back and all to the break and done, y'all! In 2021, Selena Gomez is the Sugar Plum Fairy in Nutcracker. Oh my god, guys, I am a fairy. I just, wow! In 2022, Daniel Day Lewis returns to the silver screen as a dinosaur in Rite of Spring. Hey, you can't prove who's under here. And finally, in 2023, Brian Cranston in Breaking Bach. I want abstract imagery, not too vague, not too specific, spread out as far as the eye can see. No way, I mean, what, you crazy? You goddamn right. They all join forces in the Fantasiers. Never has there been such a misguided franchise with so many celebrities attached. Okay, there's been several, but this one's especially embarrassing. Hi, I'm Bette Midler. Let me treat you like a dumbass by calling Salvador Dali the melting watch guy. You're too early. That's for phase two. Oh, my God. The Fantasia Cinematic Universe. Right after we finish the Marvel, Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Muppets, Pirates, and Disney Nature Cinematic Universes. And also our new animated films. And Pixar's. And like 50 live action remakes. But once we finish our live action Home on the Range, we promise we'll get around to it. You're lying, aren't you? Yes, we are. Yeah. So Melina gets the help of another magician called Drake Stone, an obvious David Blaine ripoff who apparently uses his real magic to entertain people. Fun fact, this was actually the same actor who played Doctor Doom in Fan Four Stick. My master disappeared when I was 15, vanished. Left me with nothing but an incantus and some prescription grade abandonment issues. I'm still taking him more seriously here. Me too. Cage continues to train David when... Hi, Hi. we should go. Who's that? The girl from earlier. The Winter Soldier? Oh, right, right. That was this movie? That was this movie. I completely forgot. Yeah, we all did. 25 minutes off screen, we're reintroduced to Bucky Barnes. Just call her Winter Soldier. It's the only way I'll remember her. Sounds good. And we're supposed to just pick up where their non-existent chemistry left off. I think you'd better step into my cage. It might be a little crowded inside him, but there's always room for one more voice in his head. He shows how the electric coils, when positioned right, can actually make musical sounds. The coils are firing at such a high frequency that the sparks literally create sound waves as they fly through the air, which is... Nerdy. <laughs> oh, I'm sappy. You know, he really is the poor man's Andrew Garfield. Andrew Heathcliff. Ooh, very good. The next day, when he's going to the bathroom, he's accosted by Russell Offbrand. Prime Merlinian, eh? You don't look like much. Oh, I'm sorry, miss. This is the men's room. <laughs> but Cage comes to save him from both Melina and Borat Zoolander. To be fair, he does use probably the film's best sound effect. Oh. Why does that insanity work and none of the other madness does? Don't worry, it's followed by a stupid line. What are you doing here, Dave? Working on my master's thesis. What do you think I'm doing in the bathroom? Well, that exposition in the opening was so much fun, let's literally have it told to us again! Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Everything that was said to us in the intro is repeated back to us pretty much for no reason. Watch! Morgana. She was making preparations for something that would enable her to enslave mankind. Merlin had three apprentices. I was one of them. You told me this. I heard all of this. Who would inherit his power. In all fairness, did you even listen in the beginning? No, because I'm sick of listening in general. I'm tired of people and movie taking advantage of me! Hello? Uh -huh. This is world-renowned director Stanley Kubrick. Uh -huh. You've come back from the dead or with Bill in the other room? Uh -huh. You're gonna shoot the Nostalgia Critic movie on the set of the moon? Uh -huh. I'll be right there! Uh -huh. <laughs> oh! Speaking of bad jokes, take a look at this fascinatingly botched Star Wars homage. You don't need to see my faculty identification card. I don't need your faculty identification card. These are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> the lesson, kids, is if you can't be bothered to think of something original, just steal something and admit you're stealing it. That's the same thing as actual creativity, kinda.
After we see the dog presumably piss on a Fantasia DVD, Dave realizes he has to get the place clean for his girlfriend. This is the plot now. And as you'd imagine, a mere 62 minutes into this Sorcerer's Apprentice remake, they finally remake the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Poorly. Sucktastic is how I would put it. In Fantasia, the brooms went out of control because Mickey was off daydreaming. And not just any daydream, he was dreaming about being a god, controlling the cosmos, altering the fabric of reality to suit his every whim. Kind of like the real Mickey Mouse, come to think of it. What is Dave off doing while this flubber dance is going on? Showering and brushing his tongue. Whimsical. Yeah, it's a little ironic that Mickey used magic to be lazy with his chores while Dave is using chores to be lazy with his magic. Command you to stop! Wow, that line read was so bad it stopped the whole movie. Even that spray bottle is like, I'm Windex and I could have read that line better. The shadow of him with the axe! They're so similar, I can barely tell the difference! Even that isn't done right! In the original, it was intense, like a freaking horror film! He just wails on that thing until there's nothing left! Here, it's just slow, random, and dull. So the Mickey Mouse cartoon is actually more intense than the Nicolas Cage movie? What is world? Cage comes to save the day, making us realize if you cut the Sorcerer's Apprentice scene out of the Sorcerer's Apprentice, absolutely nothing would be lost from the story. But look, he has something pointy on his head. <gasps> Authentic! This whole scene is like when a little kid retells a joke he heard without understanding what made it funny! This must not happen. Dave sends the Winter Soldier away, but for some reason, she is in no way bothered by this. Do you really think that one botched date was gonna make me hate you forever? You can just replace all her dialogue with support, support, support. Originally, this was her stand-in. Are you afraid of heights? A little bit. Trust me. Yoink, yoink. <sighs> wow. Yeah. No, I mean, I didn't know I could piss myself eight times simultaneously. Do you remember when you drew King Kong in the bus window? And he lined up with the Empire State Building. You saw the world in your own way. I am trying to find some reason to be attracted to you. But Molina ambushes Cage and takes the doll from him. It's lighter than I remember. So's the source material. But Dave returns and they chase down the villains to get the doll back. What the heck is this? Is he turning into a Mars Attacks Martian? Uh, uh, uh. The villains escape and realize they need reinforcements to win, so they bring another friend to life to kidnap Dave's girlfriend. I said I'd like to make a request. Okay, this might work. Yeah, new character. Looks kind of creepy and badass. Let's see what they do with her. I need your power to free Morgana. I just don't need you. We didn't even see how she kidnapped the girlfriend, or use any magic, or fought anybody off! Critic, 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 they had to use that time for more important scenes. Like what? Command you to stop! Oh, yeah, cause that got a big laugh! <laughs> oh, shut up! <laughs> Dave tries to get the doll back while Melina watches on. Dave, you know the drill. Give me what I want and I'll let her go. You've seen this done in a million movies. We're not very original, so this will be a million and one. Silence. You give me Merlin's ring and the Grimold. Throw me the idol, I throw you the whip. He of course hands it over and Cage realizes he has to take this on by himself. No one knows how much time they have to be with the people that are the most important. Enjoy it. Oh, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Bad time, Dave. Oh wow, this film is just full of people I forgot were even in it. I'm still waiting for them to cut back to the disgruntled army general, the Olympic gymnast fighting for the girl's affection, and the CGI giraffe voiced by Larry David. None of those were in this movie. But for a moment, you thought they might be. This is really dangerous. I want to come with you. You're sexy. 
Huh? huh? Pat enough he has a voice as fragile as a Fabergé egg, but couldn't you give him a slightly cool line? You're sexy. Move over, Toby Maguire. We have a new I hunch. So Morgana is released while still in Veronica's body, and she tries to raise all the dead sorcerers to destroy the world. I cannot raise the dead until the circle is complete. Man, that is a goal-centered woman. No, how long have I been out? Or what happened over the centuries? Or has Disney bought everything by this point? But Cage tries to stop them, and they have, well, there's only one way to put it, a wizard's duel. No disappearing. No. Where the hell is that little girl statue? I got a score to settle! You know, could we get more New York statues in on this? I want to see Vladimir Lenin, Eleanor Roosevelt, and Balto fight to the death. Then we'll get the Statue of Liberty to rampage through the city to the tune of higher and higher. And this movie's stolen enough already. Haven't you learned anything? It's not stealing if you admit that it's stealing. Uh, just have Dave say, hey, that looks like Ghostbusters 2. Problem solved. <laughs> Cage gets Morgana out, and for no given reason, Dave can fight her without his ring, because something something ruby slippers. I put a spell on you, and now you're gone! But I'm not alone. I brought a little science with me. Yep, the science of a mop that can move of its own power. Science rules! Well, I guess you could say the mop cleaned up this mess. Yeah! So Morgana is destroyed, and oh no, it looks like Cage is too. No, 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 it's not over. He can't die. I just, not, not now. Gee, I can't believe they killed off the main character in a Disney film. Yeah, just like Snow White and Pinocchio and Trusty and Aurora and Darby O'Gill and Baloo and Robin Hood and Chief and Gurgi and Basil and the Beast and Iago and Esmeralda and Megara and Giselle and Wally and Flynn and Iron Man and Ralph and Anna and Baymax. Well, I for one am shocked. That's not good enough. You, you, with all your stupid fools! And all those old man's shoes, you're constantly saving me with that look in your eyes. You will believe you're watching a movie. Of course, Cage comes back, and Dave is reunited with his totally useless girlfriend, and they fly the eagle to Isengard to rescue Gandalf. How far, Holang? And that was Nicolas Cage and the Sorcerer's Apprentice. How is this not fun? One of the biggest creative risks of Walt Disney's career has been turned into one of the least creatively risky movies I've ever seen. The tired-ass Chosen One story is beyond hackneyed, and it's not even done well. There's no build to it. He goes from incompetent to all-powerful at the end like an on-off switch. Sometimes there's kind of neat effects or kind of cool acting from Alfred Molina, but that's as far as it gets. Just kind of cool. You know how most Disney Bruckheimer movies are these insanely long two and a half hour monstrosities? This feels like it was shot to be one of those, but then cut down to an hour 45. So it still has the bloated structure of a long ass movie, which makes it feel longer than it is. Not even Nicolas Cage as a friggin sorcerer can make it interesting. It sucks seeing Cage go from awesomely good to awesomely bad to just bad. And I can tell you, with him averaging six movies a year now, I am not falling for the Nicolas Cage hype train again. Maybe somewhere down the line we'll get one of those kick-ass performances again. But until then, I am not being nearly as gullible! Hello? Hey, it's Corey Taylor. Corey Taylor, lead singer of Slipknot. And Stone Sour, yeah. And let me guess, you're in the other room with... Chester A. Bum, Hyper Fangirl, Black Willy Wonka, Rob Scallon, and your son, Griff, inviting us to go on tour on an ice cream truck. Actually, that's it exactly. Screw you, buddy! I'm smarter than you think! I'm proud of you, man. Thank you. Will? You said no. Oh, that's a shame. At least you tried. Oh, well. Mm. I guess we'll go on tour without him. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Yes. Hi, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and this week we are doing the American Brain Tumor Association. Founded in 1973, the American Brain Tumor Association is the first and only national advocacy organization committed to funding brain tumor research and providing information and education on all tumor types for all age groups. For over 40 years, they've been providing comprehensive resources that support the complex needs of brain tumor patients and caregivers as well as the critical funding of research in the pursuit of breakthroughs in brain tumor diagnosis, treatment, and care. If you look at their site and their YouTube channel, you can see not only how many people they help, but that they even offer tips and advice every Tuesday for how to cope living with a brain tumor, as well as how to spot early symptoms. Take a look at the link and see how you too can play a big part in bringing this to an end.